Are you ready for another deep dive into the world of my 600 pound life to see just how toxic some people's relationships with food can get? Today, we're zooming in on the lives of Shannon, Lindsay, and Tammy, three individuals whose daily calorie intake is as shocking as their struggles with weight. Join us as we dissect their meals, revealing the astonishing calorie counts that fuel their days. So, if you're all set to see just how much these individuals consume in a day and the impact it has on their journey towards health, hit that subscribe button. Ready to count those calories? Let's dive in. This is Shannon, a 39-year-old woman who weighs more than 600 pounds, and she hates every waking minute of her life because of it. I hate my my life because I'm not even living anymore. I'm too big to do anything. So my whole world is just my bed right now. I can still get up, but just barely because of how bad it hurts to move all my weight around now. So I stay in this bed all day and it's miserable. Because of how weak her body has become, Shannon needs help doing even the simplest of things, which has led to her staying home most of the time, never going out or meeting new people. So I don't ever go out and do anything. The vast majority of my friends are people that I know online. Aside from my online friends, the only relationships in my life I still have are my dad, some of my neighbors that stop in to see me, and my husband, Simon. But he has to be my caregiver. And the worst part? Shannon knows exactly what the problem is, her unhealthy obsession with food. Shannon's husband, Simon, is her primary caretaker. In many ways, he's enabling his wife's messed up relationship with food. I stayed in a nursing home for a couple years. But when I was around 29, I met Simon. I started playing games online and was meeting new people that way. And that's how I met Simon. I met Shannon on social media. My first impression, she was a beautiful woman. I think the first thing maybe was a smile. It sounds stupid, but I think it's true. Personality, the way she looked, obviously. And yeah, she's a beautiful woman. After just a few months, he asked me to marry him. And we got married a few months after that and we've been together ever since. Shannon has a serving that can easily feed three people for breakfast. Piles of pancakes with sugar syrup and whipped cream, eggs cooked in butter, English muffins, sausages, and bacon with hot sauce. Food has been the most important thing in my life, and it's always been there for me, and I don't know how to give that up. When I'm eating, I'm happy. It's pleasure, it's happiness for me. I love that it takes the pain away. It takes the loneliness away. You don't want to deal with all the garbage that's going on in your head. You know, I've actually tried to stop eating. When my dad had his gastric bypass five years ago, I tried the liquid diet he had to go on to see if I could do it, and I couldn't. Her first meal of the day is easily over 6,000 calories, which is not how anyone should be starting their day, and Shannon knows it. My biggest fear is that I go to bed one night and I just don't wake up. Simon finds me and I'm already gone. That's not it though. For lunch, Shannon has multiple servings of an unhealthy fast food meal that consists of fried chicken and french fries, adding another 3,000 calories to her day. I do want help to change my life and to get better. So I have to try something, no matter how scary it is. And I've wanted bypass surgery ever since I got over 400 pounds. But part of what scares me about trying to get it is that I love food too much to give up. All in all, Shannon easily consumes up to 9,000 calories every day, considering that most of her diet is just made up of fast food and junk. That's more than twice the calories that she needs to live a healthy life. Lindsay Witta is 39 years old, and her weight has made it hard for her to live a normal life. She knows that every day is another battle. With how bad my body is now, I feel like it's a miracle I still wake up every morning. So the moment I wake up, I say a little prayer. Thank you for making me wake up because I'm just terrified of dying in my sleep. My weight's just gotten to the point where my body feels like it's falling apart and I'm in constant pain. Lindsay is self-aware enough to know how bad her condition really is, but she just can't help it. Why? Because she thinks it's all going to be worth it when she gets to eat. I'm ashamed I let myself get to this point. Sometimes I feel like I have blinders on, like, oh, it's not that bad. Uh, when it is really bad. I have seen Paul look at me and discuss for me being obese. So I try to finish showering and getting dressed before he's back from getting me breakfast. And the whole time I'm pushing myself to get dressed, I'm telling myself, if I just finish, I can get my reward for all my hard work. Lindsay's relationship with food isn't the healthiest. The first meal you see her having as soon as she starts her day is a full pizza along with a dose of sugary dessert on the side. And once I get it, I savor every single bite of it. Just love the way a meal makes me feel. When I'm eating breakfast, I'm already thinking about lunch. 
When I'm eating lunch, I'm already thinking about supper. I'm eating supper, thinking about what I can have for a snack. It never stops for me, and I never want it to stop because that good feeling I get from it doesn't last long. And breakfast is the kickoff. So once I finish that, I have to have more. Breakfast adds about 3,000 calories to Lindsay's food intake every day. And that's just the beginning. Right after breakfast, Lindsay devours two full plates of loaded nachos. Paul has to do a lot of grocery shopping to keep up with me. And he makes little remarks about it. Like, wow, you're gonna eat all those? Or um, you're eating again? And it kind of makes me a little embarrassed, but not enough to stop. It just makes me eat more when no one is around. Food and me have a special relationship. I just love it. It's always been there for me when no one else was. And it's been that way for a very, very long time now. That's another 2,400 calories right there. And the worst part, Lindsay doesn't even seem to realize how unhealthy this is. For dinner, Lindsay microwaved herself a large bowl of mac and cheese along with a huge side of carbs and red meat. I know how much I eat frustrates Paul, but he stopped trying to do anything about it because he knows it won't help. When we first met, she was extremely excited about life. Do you need a knife? But now Lindsay just eats or sleeps all the time. So that's that's extremely difficult. It's, it's not the same Lindsay and Paul that it used to be. That's another 5,000 calories based on the serving sizes that Lindsay eats to stay satisfied and full. And it's obvious that her lifestyle is having an impact on her relationships. Lindsay knows that she has to change something, but when she's stressed out, she ends up consuming even more calories and snacks. I just don't want him to get frustrated or, or really exhausted to the point that he leaves me because I know it disappoints him. She's killing herself slowly. I love her so freaking much, but I'm watching her die right in front of me. <laughs> it's, and I feel helpless. I'm desperate at this point because I know I can't do what I need on my own. I have to get help before it's too late. Here, she's finishing up a meal that's worth 2,000 calories right after she's had an argument with her husband, which just goes to show how much Lindsay relies on food. Even as she's driving to the doctor, Lindsay needs her fix of unhealthy fast food. I'm going to need all the help I can get to make it to Houston and push through the pain. So I think fast food is just going to have to be a necessary evil on this trip. All right. Ready to roll? Yep. Rock and roll. Ready. Food has always helped me get through whatever I need. And with most of the trip still ahead of us, and what I'm already feeling in my body, I know I'm going to need it to get me to Houston. I just hope the pain doesn't get much worse too quickly. The pizza she eats along with the soda adds another 2,000 calories to her plate, and that's the last thing she needs to be doing right before her appointment. While Lindsay and her husband spend the night at a motel, she continues to eat fast food that's worth 3,000 calories because she just can't seem to help herself. All right, I'm back. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm going to go over this chair so I can have, like, some support, but my back is giving me some problems. Let me see this. Holy buckets. Oh, wow. It's huge. Ooh. Kind of anxious ah. to see what, just, what happened. They put mayonnaise on it. Oh, well. This is all so much harder than I thought it was going to be. So I'm scared right now because I know I have to make it to Houston. This way, Lindsay easily consumes about 15,000 calories in the entire episode, highlighting the need for her to get help immediately. Meet Tammy, a 54-year-old woman who needs some serious help managing her weight. The first thing that happens each morning is I get out of bed and my stomach nearly hits the floor and it is putting intense pressure on the rest of my body. My belly is sagging more and more and it feels like I'm always off. Living in my body, it's miserable. Every day, little things, little things are such an issue. You know, if I didn't have this big mass of fat and everything in front of me, everything else wouldn't be as difficult to do. Tammy knows that her weight gain stems from childhood issues that led to her developing a toxic relationship with food. My mom just fell apart. She had a hard time getting out of bed and she went into a deep depression and it was like, I lost my mom too. So I'm this little kid at home with nobody to really take care of me. Because my mom wasn't there, you know, I turned to the food. I could just eat whatever I wanted, when I wanted, and it was my friend. It was my parent, my loved one. But the thing is, even as an adult, she continues to let that relationship affect her life. And now I don't know what I weigh, 
but I'm afraid I'm close to 600 pounds. My weight has made it nearly impossible for me to be self-reliant. The only thing that I sit and I can really do for myself, and it's not without help, is to sit down and cook a meal. Hey, Zachary. Yes? Can you come here? So I need a few things out of the fridge. Okay. Grab me the hamburger and the cheese out of the fridge. Uh, I think it's in the bottom. My son, Zachary, is 16, and because of my weight, I have to rely on Zachary more and more. Here you see Tammy cooking herself and her family a meal that's not ideal for someone her weight. I feel guilty. I feel bad because this is not how things are supposed to be. It's just the most kind of humiliating thing to ask for help all the time. Since Tammy's lived with me, her eating habits have gotten worse. I try to tell her that she shouldn't eat like she does, and I try not to enable Tammy, but she gets mad if she don't get what she wants. Tammy's meal of two giant servings of lasagna and a ton of carbs, along with a big glass of soda, adds about 4,000 calories to her day. When I first start eating, it's like the best thing in the world. It's like when you've won the lottery. It's just the greatest thing. It makes me feel so good about everything at that moment. But I know I eat at least four or five times more than I should. And now I see Zachary falling in my footsteps, gaining weight and picking up the same bad eating habits that I have but she doesn't seem to be doing anything about the consequences of her actions. After meeting with the doctor, there's been an immediate shift in Tammy's life. She's making an active effort to eat healthier meals, but her family isn't making it any easier. It's been a couple of weeks since I saw a doctor now, and it's been tough. My whole life, I've eaten whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, but I can't do that anymore. And it's been especially hard because I'm not getting the support I thought I would. My family is not changing their diet for me. It used to be where we pretty much ate the same thing at night for dinner, but now I'm having to make me for them and a completely different one for me. Tammy has reduced her portion sizes to just about 500 calories per meal, making sure she's eating a lot of healthy veggies to stay full without the need to eat meals fit for two. And that wraps up today's episode. We've taken a close look at three struggling individuals and their daily eating habits, uncovering the astonishing number of calories that have become a part of their everyday lives. It's been a journey full of eye-opening moments and hard truths about the battle with food addiction and weight. Don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to Plot Twist for more compelling content. Your engagement is what keeps these stories coming. Stay tuned for more adventures, where we explore the real-life challenges and triumphs of extraordinary people. See you next time on Plot Twist.